Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Daybreak. We've got a packed show for you this morning. From controversies surrounding the new Wicked movie to a festival bringing some larger-than-life pumpkins to the Pittsburgh area. Plus, another themed edition of Daybreak Hotline. Wake up and smell the coffee, Pittsburgh. Daybreak starts right now. Let's get started with this week's weather report. It's going to be a little chilly this weekend, with Saturday at a high of 59 and Sunday at a high of 58. Don't bring out that winter coat just yet, though. The week is going to warm up a bit, with Wednesday being our highest temperature at 74 degrees and sunny. Sun will be out most of the week, with the clouds coming out later in the week. WTAE reports that the, quote, Queen of Christmas is adding Pittsburgh to her nice list, end quote. The well-known singer Mariah Carey is bringing her Merry Christmas one and all tour to Pittsburgh. This event will be taking place at PPG Paints Arena on Tuesday, December 5th. As we fastly approach this holiday season, Mariah will perform many of her holiday classics, including All I Want for Christmas is You. Pre-sales are already happening on Ticketmaster.com, with tickets starting at $67. If you're a big Mariah Carey fan, VIP tickets are ranging from $417 to $836. Ticket sales are selling fast, so grab them while you can. If you've been on social media, you've most likely seen advertisements, promotional products, and excitement leading up to the Wicked movie, now a little under a month out from its release date. The musical movie, based on the hit Broadway show and book stars Cynthia Erivo and Ariana Grande as the green and pink dynamic duo. Among the new promotional materials, they released a poster with Erivo and Grande paying homage to the original Broadway poster, a poster which brought light criticization from fans, prompting edits to be made to make a lo little bit more like the original. A fan edit made it so Erivo's eyes were more shaded and she had a red lip, and then Grande's hand was covering her own face more. Although made in a fun and simple amusement from a fan, Arivo responded negatively to the edit, surprising fans. Arivo said, the original, quote, the original poster is an illustration. I am a real life human being, end quote. She also stated, quote, our poster is an homage, not an imitation. To edit my face and hide my eyes is to erase me. And that is just deeply hurtful, end quote. Arivo's res response sparked memes within the fandom, poking fun at her statements. As for the Wicked movie itself, the film will be released November 22nd this year. The original poster still intact. And, you know, I, I'm really excited about this movie, but that reaction coming from like a Broadway person was so silly. <laughs> yeah, at this point, I don't really know if I even want to see the movie. Is that bad? No, not necessarily. <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit of a Broadway naturalist, I like to call mm. myself. <laughs> Sometimes the movies just ruin it for me. Not all of them can be Mamma Mia hits. That's true, no, that's true. I agree. I mean, if you take like a Disney movie and make it into Broadway, that's one thing. But I feel like, I don't know. I also don't know about Ariana Grande. Like, I don't know how, like her acting, you know what I mean? All mm -hmm. I can think about is like her, what was she, Cat and um, Victorious. Victorious <laughs> and Sam and Cat. Like, that's mm -hmm. the only thing I can really like imagine her. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of intrigued to see because I know Grande, she's been like, she started on Broadway in like a musical called 13 in, on Broadway at first, like before any of her Nickelodeon stuff. So I'm intrigued how she'll do like now. But yeah. yeah. Hmm. Interesting. We'll just have to see, I guess. I know. <laughs> what do you guys think about Mariah Carey? Oh, uh, I love that she, you know, she just, I love that she's owning it. She's owning the de for Christmas. Yeah, <laughs> I think, already. I think it's a great, like, honestly, like, from a marketing perspective, that's great for her. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I absolutely love to see how it's going. Yeah. But let's see what we, else we've got for you today on Daybreak. Point Park University's senior dance majors are hosting a student choreography project this weekend. The students were required to hold auditions back in August and cast the juniors, sophomores, and freshmen into their own pieces. They had to find rehearsal space, choreograph, and put together costume pieces all on their own. SCP is happening in GRW1, a, stu a studio in Lawrence Hall on campus. There are still chances for you to see the dance majors perform of Point Park's performance this weekend, Friday at 7.30 p.m., Saturday at 2 p.m. and 7.30 p.m., and Sunday at 2 p.m. 
Lily Osborne, a freshman dance major, told us, quote, her favorite part of SCP, she said, I have loved working with my amazing choreographer, Eva Lang, and the other girls in the piece. I'm overall just super excited to have the opportunity to be performing, end quote. On Saturday, November 2nd, Pittsburgh's very own Pittsburgh Penguins will be hosting Pittsburgh Night inside PPG Paints Arena. There they will face off against the Montreal Canadiens with doors opening at 5.30 and puck drops set to start at 7. The event is being held to honor the city and its history with U.S. Steel sponsoring the night to acknowledge and remember Pittsburgh's rich history in the steel community. At the event, the first 7,500 fans to enter will also receive a free Pittsburgh Night rally towel. Specialty Pittsburgh-themed menus will also be featured inside the Lexus and Casamigos Club. One famous Pittsburgh native will also make an appearance, that being Wiz Khalifa, who will make several performances. Finally, some other fit famous Pittsburgh figures will be in attendance, such as Steely McBeam and the Pirate Parrot, so be sure to grab your tickets before they sell out. Now, are any of you going to Pittsburgh night? I don't know if any of you are hockey fans. No. I don't think that's a question for us. <laughs> I haven't heard about it until just now. <laughs> I also just heard about it, but I don't know. I'm debating buying a ticket. Yeah, I'm not like fun. a huge hockey fan, mm -hmm. but I don't know. It's just like, I feel like it'd be super fun. I mean, then again, I have to see what ticket prices are, yeah, but true. it's... It's yeah. not going to be like your typical hockey game either. I mean, no, so no. Many going on, definitely so. not. And also, mm -hmm. it's not a U.S. team playing. It's... Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, it, it is the Canadians, not you know, anything crazy yeah, here, but right. it'd still be cool to see. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's also, like, it's hard to do a lot of, like, the sports things in Pittsburgh unless you're mm. really into it because a lot of times the tickets are so, like, astronomical in price. But it seems like a fun activity that I'd be interested in going, like, yeah. you know. Yeah, no, ticket prices are insane. I feel like most people who go to, like, sports events now, like, are either, like, season ticket holders or, like, you know, really, really into <laughs> it. So... I don't know about that, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, with like stuff, speaking of ticket prices, the Point Park shows for students are free. They're so free, SCP. yeah, so come out to SCP this yeah, weekend. which is so, so fun. Mm -hmm. um, I just saw it uh, last night with mm -hmm. my roommate Sky was in one of the pieces. Mm -hmm. So it was, it's always nice to see the performances at yeah. Point Park. Like, I think it's just, it's such a wonderful, like, creative mm -hmm. environment. Yeah. yeah, it gives so many opportunities to all the different majors here, so. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so watch out, Tom Holland fans. The Spider-Man actor is set to star in Christopher Nolan's new film. Holland will act alongside Matt Damon in Nolan's new movie that is scheduled to release July 17th, 2026. The movie is going to be released by Universal Studios, and Nolan will be writing and directing the film. Although there is not much information out just yet, following Nolan's box office hit Oppenheimer, the project is sure to bring in the audiences. Pittsburgh's Monster Pumpkin Fest once again returned for just a few short days. The event took place in Pittsburgh's Strip District this past Saturday and Sunday, where on both days you could see the iconic pumpkin drop. There they lifted pumpkins weighing thousands of pounds in the air by crane and dropped them into a pool filled with ping pong balls that were sold off for charity. Point Park even had a few events named after itself. One was the Point Park University. University Pumpkin Pool Drop, which was held on Saturday, and the second event was the Point Park University Pumpkin Pool, where people could test their strength pooling giant pumpkins, which was held on both days. Of course, there were other events, such as a giant pumpkin competition, with the winner weighing in at 2,464 pounds, breaking a Pennsylvania record. Though the event did wrap up, Pittsburgh is sure to eagerly await its return next October. That seems like just <laughs> the most absolute fun thing ever. I'm so sad I missed it. I didn't oh, know what was yeah. happening. Where was it? It was in the Strip District. Okay, yeah. I don't remember the exact location, but I think it was like a festival up and down the street. Okay, yeah. And mm -hmm. I mean, there's pumpkins loading the street for an entire weekend. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like over a thousand pound pumpkin is crazy. I think there was one That's that was insane. like almost 2,000 pounds too. <laughs> and oh, you just imagine goodness. it like being lifted in the air and dropped <laughs> into a so pool. That's so silly. <laughs> like that's so like... Amusing, but like, like almost like silly at the same time. Yeah. Like, I want to know who thought of this. Like, yeah. Met, okay, what if we lifted <laughs> like a pummy that weighs like two tons yeah. in the air and then just dropped it? Cause why not? 
No, I know. Like, it's like those YouTubers that are like, what if we dropped an iPhone from 3,000 oh feet in jello? Like, oh my gosh, yeah. I forget what the one guy's name is. It might be like Mr. Beast or something. Like, they do like ridiculous things and it like gets so many oh, views for no reason. And to oh the whole charity God. aspect, you can buy a ping pong ball that was in the same pool the pumpkin was dropped in. That's crazy. Why not? Yeah. But, yeah. oh my gosh, about like Tom Holland, like another movie. And it's not, it wasn't in my story, but... He also just announced that Spider-Man 4 is going to be coming out, too. So there's going to be a oh, lot wow. of Tom Holland we're seeing on the big Holland. screen <laughs> oh, coming up. Which I is haven't even exciting. seen any of that yet, so... Really? You haven't seen any no. of that? No. Neither have I. I haven't seen any Spider-Man movies. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Me neither. Oh, yeah. I'm such a big Unfortunately, no. I'm not a Marvel person. <laughs> uh, I know. <laughs> I have nothing against it. I've just no, never grew up watching Marvel. I grew yeah, up watching neither. DC. But yeah. yeah. I did see Tom Holland and, you know... Whatever his other movies are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I well, love that guy. <laughs> we're going to go to for a quick break. When we come back with reporter Ethan Rodwinski is going to Politismack this week's political news with an update on some important Senate races going on in PA. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Daybreak, I'm Ethan Rowinski. While the presidential election is taking up the spotlight this year, both in the media and in the minds of voters, there are many Senate races happening across the country that are incredibly important to deciding the future of how our country is run. 34 seats are currently up for election, and in a Senate where effectively Democrats hold the majority by one senator, that being Kamala Harris herself as vice president, every possible switch-up can have major implications. Firstly, Pennsylvania has to be mentioned, as it is both incredibly important in the presidential race and in the fight for Senate control. As Bob Casey is fighting to keep control of the Senate race, he's held since 2007 against former hedge fund manager Dave McCormick. Casey has held firm in his position, focusing on his pro-choice stance on abortion and his vice in his fight against corporate price gouging this election. McCormick, on the other hand, hand, firmly believes that Casey is the cause for higher prices in Pennsylvania, with him having voted 98% with the Biden administration. Another key race that Democrats are worried may cost them their Senate control is the race in Montana, featuring incumbent John Tester, and the only Demo who is the only Democrat in Montana holding a statewide office, and 38-year-old Tom Sheehy, founder of an aerial firefighting group and a former Navy SEAL. While Tester has positioned himself as a moderate, which has helped him keep his seat in a very Republican state, an influx of Republican voters moving to the state may upset his position, with Sheehy currently ahead by eight points according to the latest New York Times Siena College polls. Finally, one of the most expensive races of the entire election cycle has been taking place in Pennsylvania's neighbor, Ohio. It's hard now to imagine that at one point, Ohio was a fairly valuable swing state, especially with how much of a Republican stronghold the state has become in recent years. Democrat Sherrod Brown has held his seat since 2007, but the Trump-backed Bernie Moreno has made strides in the party and is hoping to flip the seat in a state that Trump won by eight points in 2020. This race is going to have some of the tightest margins in the entire country, leading many to wonder who exactly is going to win control of the Senate come January of next year. 
Okay, so with all this craziness going on, who do we think overall is going to win the Senate? So the biggest thing is that 538, which is an aggregate polling system that ABC runs, they did a simulation of 100 different races saying, you know, if we keep in mind that 50% of the time J.D. Vance might be the tie-breaking vote, 50% of the time it would be Tim Walz as vice president. Doing that simulation, Republicans had controlled the House 87 out of 100 times. And there's a multitude of reasons for that. One, in West Virginia, longtime Senator Joe Manchin, who is a Democrat, recently has become an independent, he's retired this year mm -hmm. and win a state like West Virginia that's very very Republican you know it's there's no way that a Democrat is gonna win that seat so they're automatically losing one seat there and Montana like I was saying the Republican there is ahead by eight points it mm -hmm. basically if Democrats were going to get control all of these razor-thin margins all of these pull in different states like Pennsylvania like Montana like Michigan is another big one I didn't mention all of those races Democrats would need to win, even if Republicans are ahead by a point or two, is the big thing. I think it's interesting, wow. like, it, like, it being so important to vote in the election, like, this year, especially mm -hmm. a lot of us are first-time voters, like, in yep. the presidential election specifically, um, with it being so close in, in what you're saying and all of these studies and, like, tests that they've ran through so far in the country. No, I mean, absolutely. And it, one of the biggest things that is going to decide this, especially in the South, in the Senate, and also the House is a whole other race I didn't even mention, um, is people breaking from their presidential vote to vote for some, a Senate or House candidate from a different party. Mm -hmm. Especially as we've gotten more and more recent in the past 20 years, we don't really see any of that. You know, if someone's voting for a Democrat at the, at the top of the ticket, they're voting Democrat the whole way. The oh, if they're voting Republican, they're voting Republican down the whole ticket. In places, um, you know, main second district, which, you know, you might not expect to be such a swingy county, really has been one of those deciding counties of, you know, is a Democrat going to run, is, is a Democrat going to win or is a Republican going to win? And that mm -hmm. might vary largely from who the president is going to be mm -hmm. or who's going to win the presidential election in that county. So it's really one of the big questions with Senate and House control is how many people are going to break away from, you know, their, their presidential pick. You know, usually, like, like I was saying, you know, people stick to their, people stick to their party mm -hmm. pretty much. So the question is, are they going to break this year? Are they going to break break the pattern? Of people getting stronger and stronger in their positions. Right. Wow, that's Amazing. craziness. Yeah. Craziness, <laughs> all craziness. <laughs> well, next up we have Cade Montgomery giving us the inside scoop on who was just recently inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Cade. Thanks, Sav. Do you believe in life after love? American singer and actress Cher, age seventy-eight, sure does. This past, this past Saturday, October 19th, Cher was officially inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in this year's ceremony in Cleveland, Ohio. New York Post reported that during her speech, the music legend joked that she had an easier time with her two divorces than she did getting inducted into the Hall of Fame, referencing former husbands Sonny Bono and Greg Ullman. Cher was in introduced at the ceremony by actress Zendaya, who said, quote, She has navigated a multitude of musical genres, defined new ones, and reinvented others. Her music touches your heart, your spirit, makes you dance, makes you rock, and has stood the test of time, end quote. After being introduced by Zendaya, Cher took to the stage to perform and was joined by Albanian singer-songwriter Dua Lipa. The three stars later posed for a photo together. New York Post also reported that Cher thanked her late mother, Georgia Holt, in her speech, saying, quote, The one thing I think I got from my mom is I never gave up, end quote. She truly never gave up, and this induction was long overdue for the music icon. In other Cher news, she was recently honored by American singer-songwriter Halsey. Halsey's new album, The Great Impersonator, is set to release on October 25th, and the artist has been honoring other artists that inspire her on her Instagram page as a countdown to the album. On October 10th, Halsey took to Instagram to share a photo of herself recreating one of Cher's iconic 70s looks to, sh to share that the icon inspired her upcoming track, Letter to God, 1974. The caption reads, quote, Undisputed Queen. One of my favorite Cher songs, Dark Lady, was a number one hit in 1974. Still number one in my heart today, end quote. Along with the photo, Halsey shared a snippet of the song in the post as well. It is clear that Cher has made quite an impact on many people, and I doubt that we've seen the last of her. Thank you so much, Kate. I think it's so incredible knowing that she's finally in the Hall of Fame, but why do you think it took this long to recognize the absolute icon, just like you said? 
You know, I'm not sure. I've heard, like, especially from her in the speech, that the Hall of Fame, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is very hard to get into. And, mm. you know, clearly it is. You know, she's getting up there and she finally <laughs> yeah. just got in. And I feel like she has been, you know, like so many people have said about her, she's been redefining music for so many years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's just an icon. But mm. I'm glad that she is finally where she deserves to be. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I don't think there's ever been one point where she stopped making music. Like, she's been continuously <laughs> making absolute hits since literally the seven, late 60s even, I think, yeah. mm -hmm. up until now. And the 90s were a huge moment for her. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, every time she comes up with a new album, I just know it's always going to be good. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I've grown up knowing, like, a bunch of different artists who have, like, you know, publicly spoke out about how, like, she's such a inspiration to them. And I just think that she's finally where she deserves oh, to definitely. be. Definitely. And Leslie, you mentioned new albums, so I want to touch a little bit on the new Halsey album that's coming out. Mm. Have any of you guys seen any of her recreations of some oh, of these icons? Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I love it. I mm -hmm. honestly, I think it's like a great marketing tactic, but also just like it's really cool to see because it's like something like so many of them, you look at the Halsey version of it and you immediately know what she's referencing, Definitely. which I think is so strong and like powerful in like the music world, like to know exactly what someone's talking about yeah. just by a simple like image. Oh yeah, it's been incredible seeing all of these like looks that she's been recreating and I read somewhere that she's been doing her own makeup for them too. So really? like wow. she has been Amazing. putting a lot into this and I think mm -hmm. releasing this album now was also super smart because it's like Halloween season. Yeah. So like recreating these looks can be like promo for the album and also like Halloween ideas. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love the fact that she redid her own album like Badlands mm -hmm. from like years ago. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wait, I remember that from middle school. <laughs> that looks familiar. Yeah, but yeah. you know, Cher is an icon, so I'm excited to hear the track that Cher inspired. I heard the little mm -hmm. snippet that she posted, but I'm really excited to hear the full album, and I'm glad that Cher was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and got to perform alongside one of my favorites, Dua Lipa, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, I love Dua Lipa. Yeah, well, thank you, Cade. When we get back, it's time for Daybreak Hotline. Don't go anywhere, Daybreak. Who's that? It's you, our lovely viewers. Thanks for giving us a call on the Daybreak Hotline. Our hotline theme this week is Never Have I Ever. Are you guys ready? Oh yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Never have I ever been out of the country. I... Oh. <gasps> <laughs> you go okay. first. Okay. Where have you been? Um, well, my family, we like to, like, our family, like, vacation is always like cruise ships and stuff mm. so we go to like different islands like St. Thomas, St. Martin, like you know St. Kitts um, and then my cousins were born in Italy so when they were born we scooted on over there and we were like hey Whoa. how fun. Yeah so. <laughs> 
Oh, well, I was going to say, I mean, I've been, I've been to a couple islands. I've been to Jamaica, and then I've also been to Canada. Good old Canada. Oh, and like Italy, France, yeah. and oh, um, oh, just those oh, two. And, oh, just those two. And, yeah. and England. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forgot. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, I have never even left the time zone. But hey, hopefully at the That's end of okay. this year, I'll be in Ireland. Ooh, yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Yes, yes. So another one we have is never have I ever broken a bone. I've but never personally. Really? No, oh, never. God. I broke my left arm by <gasps> sitting on a skateboard. Me too. I broke my left arm, but I fell off the monkey bars. I was not sitting yeah. on a skateboard. Yeah, I fell off oh. the monkey bars and like slammed my wrist on like this wooden beam. It oh, was really man. bad. I didn't cry though. I didn't oh, cry. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I He's know. a diva. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> never have I ever sent a text to the wrong person. Oh, 100%. I was most likely, yeah. yeah. I feel like if you haven't, then like... Have you ever texted ever? Have you ever yeah. texted anybody yeah. ever in your Do you life? have more than one friend? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't really remember, to be honest. Oh, I actually have a funny story. <laughs> so, I got... It was like back in middle school, and I got like grounded for a stupid reason. And I couldn't hang out with my friends, and so I was sending a <laughs> screenshot of what my mom said to my friends, but I actually <laughs> sent the screenshot <laughs> to my mom. <laughs> So yeah, that that was classic. Yeah. That's rough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh that, we have an interesting next one. Oh. Never have I ever read an online fanfic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. well, share, share. I don't remember what it was. I just know <laughs> I did. I think it's a part of girlhood. Truly. Yeah, <laughs> I've tried to block it out of my memory. I think. Yeah. Did you say you did as well? Or I have no? not. Oh. Okay. No. I most definitely was on Wattpad reading both Harry, like Harry Potter stuff, and then also there was a really good one that was Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> I most definitely Doctor was reading that. I did, I did write a Harry Potter one at one point, oh, my sixth grade mm. self. So what can I, I say? I think you might need to read a bit of that for <laughs> us. Oh yeah, oh, yeah I'll, I'll I'll pull it out, yeah. of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and for our last one, we have Never Have I Ever Lied Playing Never Have I Ever. Mm. I don't think I've played enough times to remember. No, yeah. no lying here. I'm an open book, man. <laughs> Well, that brings us to the end of another episode of Daybreak. You can catch clips of all of the previous episodes on our YouTube channel, UView Television. You can also follow our Instagram at DaybreakPPU for updates on our shows and Daybreak Hotline links. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. I'm Leslie. I'm Annabella. And I'm Savannah. Have a great morning, Daybreak. <laughs>